Hello everyone, and welcome back to the peaceful beginner's island, where we have the Primera tribe slowly but surely growing and weeding out some of those undesirable genetics so that we can experiment in niche version 0.2.4, the jungle update. And as many of you guys know by now, there's currently no jungles. We're not anywhere near the jungles, and actually a lot of you guys are absolutely cheering for that, because right over here, towards this grassy pathway that will hopefully lead us eventually to one of the jungle islands, uh, apparently um, that path is going to lead us to certain death right now. Mm -hmm. You guys are jumping up and down in the comments, screaming as loud as you possibly can in all caps, letting me know that basically it's certain death to go to the jungle unless you have a very swift-footed creature. So thank you guys for your tips and advice as you usual, there are about a dozen and a half different ways that you guys suggest sending our, our genetics. Um, so everybody seems to have different opinions about what kind of creatures can survive in the jungle, and I will definitely be experimenting with that, so I really hope our Pumera tribe will be able to endure through the ages and survive long enough to take over the jungle island. Apparently you're actually supposed to survive the mysterious predators that await there and outlive them. If you live longer than the predators do, then they die of old age and you rule the island in safety afterward. So I think that's kind of fun. You're switching from having to really be on the offensive and attack the big predators that we're used to fighting and eating and one day perhaps may even be able to have hybrid babies with if I recall some of the Kickstarter perks correctly. That's going to be interesting. But you, you have to switch from being super strong to being super stealthy and I think that's going to be really fun for our little Pumera tribe. But that's a long way in the future. Right now we are getting ready to move to a much safer, kinder, gentler, flower-filled island, we are going to be gathering up our leader, and I have indeed picked the alpha leader of our tribe. We'll be looking over her and her new title in just a moment, and we're going to be gathering up all of the children that we want to take with us and headed to the new island, and I think we may actually have enough spots to take everybody with us, so if we can, I'll just take the entire tribe, and then we'll simply not breed any of the creatures who I don't want to pass their genetics on of. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15! There's like 15 spots over here. I think that would allow us to take a new tribe member. So that's more than enough for the whole tribe to move. And move we will in just a moment here. So I went through and after thinking about it very carefully, I feel like Lamila is truly the leader of the tribe. She kind of has inherited her mother's straightforward practicality when it comes to guiding the tribe members to really gathering up all the food. She she also has a lot of her father's strength and skills. I think she actually has, uh, he ha she has his ram horns. Did he have the ram horns? Let me check. I love the family tree. Dar, what did you have? Okay, so she doesn't have Dar's ram horns, but I just think she has a lot of her father's personality and protectiveness, but a lot of her mother Rula's uh, practicality with the practical aspects of taking care of a tribe. And oh my gosh, I forgot how Rula had nothing but daughters. This is very amusing. Look at all these baby girls. Oh my goodness. All right. So Lamila, she actually was the mate of Taro and Taro has now passed away, but he has left behind three beautiful spotted children. You guys know I have a little bit of a soft spot for those spots. So we have Poi, uh, named after the Hawaiian delicacy. And let me know if, in the comments if you guys have tried Poi and if you're kind of laughing at me for calling it a delicacy. My dad loves Poi, fresh fermented for three weeks at least on the countertop and then he'll eat it. He loves fermented Poi. Anyway, that aside, we have her eldest Poi, who is also a digger and a collector. Not a very strong collector, but he can do a little bit of digging for us. Then we have her second eldest, her second child, Lamila, named after her with this adorable little fishing tail. It's just kind of this wispy thing. So who knows, maybe she'll be a good collector. It'll be interesting to see what we do with her. And she does happen to have those stealth abilities. So she has a couple of the stealth legs. I think there's actually Whoops, let's open up the mutation menu. Yeah, the Velvet Paw, uh, which is perfect for sneaking around. Apparently, we want to have that before we go to the jungle. Everybody is saying, get that toxic body. Again, there's like a dozen different ways you guys are suggesting <laughs> to, to send our creatures. So we're just going to have fun with it. And if the Pumera tribe dies, then I will have learned something as the niche goddess above them of where to guide the next tribe in the future. But it'll be really fun to try out the Velvet Paw as time goes on. Uh, but yeah, we have little Lamila and then we have 
have Digger Taro, and I'm really excited to see what little Digger Taro does because he has double Digger Paw, and maybe that's not the most helpful genetically for getting a lot of food, but I just love the idea that he's like the perfect little Digger, and I think we may have two branches of the family tree going here. That's why I'm telling you guys all, of, all about all of the details of their genetics. We may have the kind of calm, peaceful, soft-footed, uh, or maybe not that stealthy, digging group who focuses on digging and collecting and then on the other half of the family we may follow through with Remy's line so Remy showed up out of the blue and she actually is from the same tribe that Dar was from that he was separated from as a young cub some disaster maybe he was swept away down a river kind of like in, in when we were playing the shelter games um, something dramatic like that happened to him and he was torn away from his tiger striped tribe and Remy happened to wander away from that same tribe and found Dar late in life. He was so excited and those two had several children together. So they've got these three kids that uh, Remy and Dar had and I was thinking how interesting it would be if we had the protective tigers. So if we kind of split things between the peaceful uh, gatherers who collect up all the food for us and who can focus on doing lots of digging and nest building for us and then switch it over here to maybe the more offensive and defensive um, a tiger tribe group and I think that would be kind of interesting especially if they sort of work side by side so we might try that out we already have a very clear delineation in between the two of them this early in but who knows how how soon we're gonna have to be smushing the genetics together so now that I've kind of let you guys in on that ramble and don't worry I will apologize by making this episode extra long today for all that chit chat um we're gonna move the whole tribe over to the new island and we're just gonna go ahead and do that right away this island should hopefully be safe but we do need to take just a moment to say goodbye to little rupee oh does rupee is she she has camouflage that's adorable you guys look i just it just clicked color camouflage so if your creature blends in she has oh my gosh this is so cool she has the yellow fur so that means that she has better camouflage over here that's so interesting she's like no pattern and she's on the sands so she actually blends in i thought she was like hiding behind the bones for a second and that was kind of hilarious but no she's just blending in with the sand there because of her yellow fur i will remember that so rupee is passing away she was attacked by a predator when she was young so she can't live much longer and relana is her little sister uh the very last child born from dar and his original mate rula rula you know she she kind of got a little bit old for having babies so she wasn't really that interested until the very last one but little Rolana will be taken under her sister Lamila's um, Lamila's wings or paws and guided through on life. In fact, she makes a good a good second to Lamila because they look so similar. And then finally, I'm going to start giving the different creatures titles depending on what they've earned, depending on what they've done. So we have Lamila Far Eye because she did mutate in normal eyesight. We're trying to leave behind and completely breed out short-sighted eyes at this stage. And then once we get that done we're gonna make sure we breed out no paw and we breed out hemophilia and then we can start playing with the fun genetics but because she has the normal eyes that mutated from the mutation menu and because she was the mate of uh let me let me there we go and because she was the mate of taro so he told her all about the faraway lands and she's always had her eyes kind of locked on the distance and wants to take her children into the distance and have them think beyond the small island and think beyond their boundaries and borders. That is why she has the name Lamila Far Eye. So it's kind of a title that she has earned. And the only one of the other creatures that we have named right now too is also Digger Taro because he's got double Digger Paw. So we'll be giving different names to the creatures, different titles as time goes on. So that's everything I think. Like I said, I'll make it an extra long episode today because I rambled so long about it. But we're gonna go ahead. Oh, Ruby! They're like all curled up yin and yang bones. Oh, and it even lets me know one of our animals died. Rest in peace, Ruby. Oh my gosh. All right, so she's curled up, curled up getting some rest and we're gonna move everybody else down so that we can go ahead. Let's see how far the babies can make it today. Taro, he can't go very far because he's just a little one. So Taro is going to take a second to kind of get there, but we can kind of move everybody else pretty quickly. Um, since he's going to take a minute, can I collect that? Nope. All right. Well, we'll we'll go ahead and have 
Everybody who can collect. Oh, there's a bunny. Can I get the bunny? Oh my gosh, I can get the bunny. Yes. All right. So Lamila is going to go ahead. She's sniffing the flowers, kind of poking at this area and seeing how many of the creatures may be able to cross this land bridge with them. And then let's go ahead and get Poi. He can collect up the berries really quickly since his little brother can't move too quickly. Oh my gosh, Digga, isn't Digger Taru so cute? Are you healthy? Yes, he has normal eyesight. <gasps> He's so healthy! Yay, I might be able to have lots and lots of cute babies from him. That makes me excited. All right, and Lamila, she can probably move herself pretty quickly onto that spot too. And let's see, I'll let Chi, who's our little nut gatherer, go ahead and collect that. And then she can collect up the materials. Two, three, four, five. That's nice. So she got five materials from that. And she can say goodbye to some of the bones of their their brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers. I think that's her father's bones. I can't remember whose bones that pile is. Oh, that's Taro's bones. So her like brother-in-law bones, if you want to think of it that way. We'll have Doris collect up that and this. And then Ducro is gonna wiggle his way. He can clear that away and then we'll wiggle him a little further. And Rico can't move very far because Rico's just a baby too. So Rimi, I don't think Rimi would wanna move too quickly away from her baby. So she'll gather up another nut for the journey if she's able to make it. Oh, and then I'm starting to use the animal ranks. So because right now Lamila is considered kind of like the leader, she has the alpha rank. And I don't think I'll assign any of them the Omega rank unless we really want to make sure maybe they did something or maybe they have some sort of trait that the tribe just is going to turn against. All right, so Lamila has camouflage, color camouflage. Is it because of the beach again? That's interesting. I'm going to have to be paying attention to that because I have a feeling camouflage is pretty important or will be in the jungle. All right, there we go. Everybody is aging up. Let's go ahead and collect up that nut. We'll see how far Rico can make it. Pretty far. How far can Ducro make it? Pretty far. Oh, wow, look at Rolana. She can really move. All right, so we should be able to get Rolana happily tucked in here. And then we can gather up that that little one. Uh, and then let's see, can I get you? Ah, oh, there's a bunny over there. Can I get that bunny? Maybe if it gets a little closer. All right, so Lamila can come here. And then Rumi can come over here, rest on the flowers and wait. And then Digger Taro, he can get into the flowers. They kind of move slowly. I'll have to remember, Taro does, he just has like the hind legs, so he's not a very fast mover. I think that a lot of you guys are saying you want to have lean body and you want to have uh, toxic or toxic body. You want to be able to move quickly to get away from the dangerous, dangerous creatures who are coming up. All right, good. So they're all tucked in. And then I'll have Lamila just wait here. And let's see if we can... Oh, and now the dry season's over. And we actually have a lot of rain coming in. All right, so we've got you down. Come on, little one. All right, now this one's in here. And Remy, Oh, she doesn't have very long to live. She'll grab a berry. And then now she's there. So I think that's okay. All right, you guys, we're moving. We're doing this. It's gonna happen. Lamila has gathered everybody to her. I think that after the deaths of Dar and after the deaths of um, Rula, the tribe is ready to move on. They're looking to Lamila Far Eyes for, or Lamila Far Eyed, excuse me, for guidance. And she's saying that it's time to go. Everybody, look at the little collection we have just from the very first island. This is, this is kind of interesting. Oh, wow. What a, what a varying amount that's just so cool. I like all of their patterns. All right, Lamila, she'll take one last sniff of the flowers and then we're gonna go ahead and travel to the new island. All right, I think everybody's inside the port field too. <gasps> so we're moving, okay. Hopefully to a big, beautiful island where we can focus on trying to breed up some of the new interesting traits and genetics that I'm really hoping to examine. I'm very interested in all of the spots and dots that you can hopefully have um, that'll help you blend in to make you look more toxic. I would really love to have like a tiger tribe and I would really, oh, we're here. And I would really love to have like a poison dart frog looking tribe. Okay, deep breaths, you guys. Now let's take a good look. Oh, it's a tree. Yes, already I love it. Oh, and another tree and another tree and another tree. Oh, it's just tree heaven. Oh my gosh, there's so many trees. 
<laughs> so many trees. Oh my goodness, there's so many trees. Are there more islands now? Would this lead us to another island that would just be full of flowers and soft, beautiful, kind things? And then this one, look at this one. You really would have to hoof it to come over here and this would be like a challenging island. Look at all those bones over there. Oh my goodness. Wow, and then I think this would lead to the jungle island. That's so fun. Maybe you can just go to a whole bunch of different randomly procedurally generated islands now so you don't have just a few islands to discover. That would be amazing. That would be so amazing. All right, so we're here. We are in the new lands and Lamila Far Eyes has to now guide her tribe and determine what they are going to do now that we have arrived to this new land. I have a feeling the two segments of our tribe, the tigers and the diggers, may start spreading out a little bit but maybe they'll always remember that they're sister tribes or maybe I'm gonna have to breed them together to make sure we survive we'll have to see all right well let Lamila go first so that she can go ahead what is she here oh I love having these senses that's so cool what can she smell there's a berry bush all right so she smelled a berry bush oh wow and there's a nest Wow, there's already a nest and, and a whole like rabbit, little rabbit um, burrow. Oh, that's so exciting. All right, so I think Chi would feel right at home with this nest. So she's gonna come right over and grab a, a little nut. And then Rolana uh, is also of the nut gathering cracker jaw family. So she can help out with that. She's got good movement. All right, little Rolana, we'll have you come on over. You can jump up here and help collect up the nuts. And then Rumi is also a good nutcracker. So already this branch of the family can get to work. All right, good. And there's a, I love that we can actually smell. Oh, look, and there's already, there's already things that we can have the diggers dig. This is so cool being able to use the senses. I really like it. All right, so what to do with the rest of you? Poi is a good digger. He can kind of move around. He's not a very good attacker. He's not very stealthy. So he must be a little bit of a clumsy guy. So we may have him do a little bit. Oh, what's this? A little bit of exploring? Is this a, I wonder if that's a mole burrow or a, like a little spot for moles. So we'll have to remember that. Um, I guess I'll have him explore this way. And then this is Doris. So Doris is, I think, the eldest daughter of um, of Rimi. And Rimi, I think we'll let Rimi just rest peacefully for the rest of her life right over here in the flowers. This actually would make, I oh, is the, huh, is the teleporter gone? That's interesting. Ducro, come over here and check it out for me. Yeah, I think the teleporter is gone now. <gasps> That's so interesting. I wonder if we should make this the, the peace garden, just a nice little peace garden where we can bring like fresh nuts and, and fresh water over to the elders and the elders can rest right over here. And maybe even the elders can watch after the young cubs, the young babies born into this nest can wander over here and play in the flower field safely with the elders. I like that idea. We'll probably turn this into, into like the, the peace garden for the elders. And then the babies can play here and learn from them too while the others go around to collect food. That'll work out really well, but Rini is going to wait here. We have Doris, her son. He is pretty good at exploring. I think that he and Poi probably, or excuse me, Doris, her daughter. <laughs> she, let's see, actually would Poi, Poi wouldn't make a really great mate for her, but she does have normal eyesight, which is very important. And I may have to find, where's another? Where's a male that she could possibly breed with? Oh, we are low on males. Wait a second. Um, do we have three males? Okay, thank goodness. Actually, Digger Taro would be a good mate for her because they have different immunity genes and they both have poison fang recessive. So little Taro, I'm going to send you, my friend. How far can he walk? Not very far. I'm gonna send him uh, over here as well. I'm gonna send him towards where the, the roots were. And I'll have Doris kind of help clean this area up some. All right, and then Lamila, I have a feeling she's a really good explorer. She's kind of just average at everything else, but she has some odor disguise. She has a little bit more stealth than a lot of our other creatures do. She has really good smelling from her big nose. So I think Lamila may be a little bit of an adventurer. So I'm actually going to change her icons to blue for adventure. Yeah, we'll change her icons to blue for being a bit of an adventurer. And we'll say that she scuttles away. How far can she hear and see? Aha, see, and she's already found us another berry bush, just like that. So she'll run around, no, Lamia. 
Lamili. Oh, I forgot her name. Yeah, Lamila, Lamili. There we go. Lamili, her daughter, will go around and and sniff out things. All right, Paner Pamera tribe. I keep calling Panera. You're not a bread making tribe. Sorry, guys. That's very far away for your civilized lives. Uh, many, many thousands of years in your future. Probably when you have evolved better thumbs. But the Pamera tribe. Uh, is starting to have a little bit of personality. We've got our peace garden. We're starting to assign different names to everyone. I'm starting to figure out how to use the rankings and how to start giving everybody titles and names. I like it. All right, so that said, let's go ahead and let some time pass. Oh my, that was a lot of sneezing of something. All right, can I hear anything? Oh, there's the mole. And there's a whole bunch of roots. Oh, I wonder how much stuff is going to be under those trees. <gasps> I can't wait to explore into the trees. Okay, so I probably need to be having some babies, huh? Hmm. All right. Well, that's probably true. In fact, I bet that's what Lamila is probably thinking about right now. So she's going to clear away the grass over here. And she's going to be thoughtfully considering uh, the young babies, especially now that little Digger Taro is growing up, that need to be born into the tribe. So we'll have Taro come over. He'll dig right under his mom's feet. Um, we'll have Doris come over. Can she get the mole? Sweet. And Doris managed to get that mole. Wonderful. And then, let's see, Ducro, he's an okay collector. We'll have him come over and let's see. Let's have Lamila reveal where that is and then scooch this way. And then have him scooch over here. There we go. All right, I know it seems a little bit haphazardous. So I'm just trying to figure out where everybody's gonna belong. All right, there we go. And she can gather up that nut. Oh, look at all the berries. A ripe, beautiful harvest of berries. I think that's wonderful. We'll have Rumi kind of clear some of the grasses away too. Look at us settle in and make this place home. Wonderful. And then I think little Rico has a very soft, gentle personality. She's actually a really good defender. I think she's the best defender that we have. And she's going to be watching over her mother, Rimi, because it is Rimi's final moments. So we're going to let, um, we're going to let Rimi and Rico just kind of spend a moment together and then let's pop over here and we have Poi who's a really good digger or he's a digger at least uh, and he'll gather up that berry look at that I'm so excited we have a little nest home all right and I'll have Rico come over here and she can clear out some grasses and we can say she gathered up the grasses to tuck around her mother so her mother's comfortable but I imagine the bones of the peace garden don't disturb the Pamera tribe. They just let the bones be there as a way to kind of respect their elders and teach their children. Uh, maybe like organize the bones so they can teach their children of the lives that had been. I really love that idea. So the Pamera tribe seems to be a lot more foresighted and ancestor sighted uh, with actual direct stories of the ancestors than other tribes we've had. All right, can we hear anything, smell anything nearby? All right, so all of that done, Lamila is probably thinking about the kind of babies that we need to start having. So let's start by looking over the males that we have. We have Ducro, and Ducro probably needs to focus on being our offensive, our defensive sort of group with a lot more strength. He is healthy, normal blood clotting, normal eyesight, and he has one no paw. So we need to get rid of that no paw. So if he was going to breed, who would line up genetically with him? Actually, Lamila, nope. Not Lamila. Everybody seems to share the immunity D G gene. C and F. Let's see. Yeah, it looks like. Oh, wait, wait, wait. A and G. Yeah, C and G. B and G. So the G gene is very, very strong in the family for Ducro's children. Um, he would probably want to breed. We don't want to breed with short sight. I want to make sure short sight stays, stays out of the family entirely. So Rolana may not have any babies. Uh, Rumi not having any babies. She also has no paw. But Lamila would be able to have a healthy child that uh, would have hemophilia possibly. But that Ducro's normal blood clotting would balance that out. So Lamila may find herself uh, in a bit of an arranged marriage, or Lamili, excuse me, may find herself in a bit of an arranged situation with Ducro, unless Lamila might try. Actually, wait a second. <gasps> Lamila! I think Lamila may take Ducro as a mate and have a child that will be descended for the tiger side of the family, perhaps, because they actually match with genetics, don't they? Yes! Yes, they do. And the hemophilia is only 
inactive, recessive, hopefully, hopefully that'll go away and she has normal eyesight. Good. Okay. So we have, we have a, we have a match, you guys. We've got a match between Lamila and Ducro. And then what about for Poi? So Poi, who would you match with? I need to, you know what I need to do? I need to mark, um... I hate to, I don't want to mark, I really don't want to mark with Omega and then force like the ones who won't breed to die first. So I'm just going to mark with like a blue gem in the middle or maybe a red gem. Hmm, I don't really like the color red, that's my problem. But that'll kind of signify ones we don't plan on breeding. All right, and then she doesn't plan on breeding at all because she has the short-sighted eyes. Normal eyesight, pretty much normal blood clotting. Doris, you and Poi, or you and Digger Taru? Hmm, Digger Taru. Oh, this is gonna be harder than I thought, you guys. I may just have to accept, I may have to accept that Rolana may have to have some babies and we'll just have to risk it. Um, all right, you know what? We only have one nest. We can only make so many decisions about that at one time. I've spent enough time on it. We're going to let little Rimi pass away and Lamila is going to watch like the, the distant elder uh, peacefully lay down in the peace garden of flowers and have her head just swirling like mine with thoughts about what she has noticed, what she has scented, what she has hoped for the health of the future of her tribe. So rest in peace, Rimi. I'm really glad we have this peaceful flower garden and you were able to see your children on to a new land. Oh, so sad. <laughs> All right. So now that we have, we have lost her as well, Let's go ahead, uh, Lamila will crawl into the nest and she's going to accept some berries. And then Ducro is going to pop over next to her and she'll go ahead and mate with him. They should already have a child with normal eyesight. And hopefully, let's give them something in the mutation menu. Uh, poison fangs would actually be really nice for offensive. And then I think the mo more important thing though would probably be to have claw perhaps? So let's go ahead and add claw in so that we can try to have just some defending creatures and we'll work in Velvet Paw uh, in the future otherwise. It's gonna be a little while before we can go to the jungle I think, but don't worry, we'll be hopefully back to the daily niche episodes. All right, so that's one baby down. And then Poi, I guess I'm gonna have to worry about immunity more or less last. And I'm gonna have to focus more on just keeping in the genes I need. So Rolana, actually Rolana and Poi, F and B, A and G, <gasps> they would have a healthy child. All right. And I think Poi having been told by Lamila that he needs to think about like his future. Yeah, I think we're gonna send Poi over and let's move Rolana up here and he will offer her some berries and she will accept the offer and hopefully they'll have nice healthy babies too. Chi is not going to ever be a breeder though because she does have double short-sighted eyes. And then Rumi, I guess I have to take Rumi out uh, or like put Rumi back into the breeding group if I'm so low on, on all my other all my other creatures. So we'll just stop there. And then I'll let Lamila, who does have hemophilia, so I need to be very cautious with her. Lamila would you make a good mate with Ducro? Maybe F and C, C and G. Yeah, we're gonna have some overlapping immunities, you guys, and we're just gonna have to kind of put up with it for now. I think Lamila is gonna go on a bit of an adventure. Lamila is gonna be our little adventurer for a little while. She doesn't really want to be too interested in finding a mate. Uh, she looks so small. I feel like the normal body creatures have shrunk a little bit. So Lamila is running away from the responsibilities of having children and having more mates for the good of the tribe. And we'll have Doris kind of think a little bit carefully about maybe wanting to have some children of her own. She doesn't really move very far, does she? All right, Enrico is a really good, she said goodbye to her mother. Her mother is now in the Peace Garden. Rico's a pretty good defender and she has short-sighted eyes though. So she is definitely, she's gonna become a straight up defender. Um, I should probably mark her somehow. We'll figure out the pattern, there we go. So now she's a defender who, should I just make her all three? Yeah, I think if the, the middle icon, the middle gemstone on their chest has been marked red or orange, uh, they're orange and then they turn red after the moves are over. If that 
gemstone has been marked, then that means that they probably are not going to be passing on their genetics unless something pretty dramatic has happened. So I think we'll allow Rico a chance to do a little bit of exploring in this direction and maybe kind of patrol along the edges. She won't exactly move very quickly. Hmm. But we'll have her we'll have her kind of start moving this direction and she can explore along here to make sure that we keep the tribe safe. I don't think they're worried about a lot of trouble from this area. Yeah, not smelling or scenting anything from that area. So we should be okay there. And then Digger Taro, what to do with you, my beautiful beautiful breeder boy. I think if they're like a definite absolutely healthy one, we'll give them a blue gemstone in the center to mark that they would be a prime breeder. One of our, and I'll give him a little alpha mark too, that he's definitely one we want to keep a close eye on. So who could be a good mate for you? I know we picked somebody out and we were cooing over the match being oh so perfect. Um, who was it though? I can't remember. All right, Taro, you may end up having an unfortunately close relationship with a cousin, sister, or aunt. We'll have to see. But for now, I'm going to go ahead. Oh, he blends in. He's got camouflage going. I'm going to go ahead and let him just find a little bit of food because we already have two pregnant females. So he'll look for some roots because he's such a good digger. He got two. He got two roots from one dig spot. Yes. All right. So that's how that works now. And then little Rumi, she can go ahead and do a little bit of digging and exploring too. Uh, she's back in circulation for that, but I don't know for how long. Are you on top of a root? You are on top of a root. There we go. So she can help out with gathering some food until the nest is available again. Oh, and I guess we can make another nest under the tree, can't we? All right, we'll have Rolana do that next time too. But all right, guys, I apologize for how late, late, late this episode has been. If you guys haven't been looking at my Twitter, definitely check it out to know why episodes of pretty much everything are so late. In this case, the wind has been knocking down and blowing out our internet and power quite quite often this week. We have lost internet and power three times almost every day, uh, like three days in a row. Uh, for the last week, it's been pretty chaotic, 55 to 60 mile per hour winds. So I apologize, that is truly, truly out of my control, but I'll try to make sure to get lots of niche done and up so that it will be there. And even if the wind comes and takes it away from me again, we can continue on with learning and hopefully loving and watching as the story of the Pomera tribe grows. I am so excited to realize that the islands, it doesn't seem like you just go back and forth between the same ones anymore. It looks like you can just eternally continue on in all sorts of directions and so many different islands and the island will be different every time and you can never go back to the same island. And I really like that because it means you could stay with one tribe for so, so long. Keep an eye out for streaming that we'll be doing pretty soon in the future so that you guys can sit back and we'll have some streaming niche, niche, excuse me, where you guys can give suggestions over what genetics we should put in and where should we, we should go and what we should do and who we should name the creatures. So we'll definitely be doing that as well. And I hope you guys are enjoying the Pomeras. Stick with us. We'll figure out their story. We'll weave together their ancestor tales and see if they have any surprising prophecies or a twist in their family tree coming up. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.